Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my channel Automatic Driving Lessons and the real test recording. Uh, sorry, I haven't been posting any videos lately because I've been really busy. I had a lot of tests, a lot of passes and a, and a few fails as well. I always try and record videos of my failed tests so I can uh, record the voiceover and tell you what the mistakes were. Uh, my past uh, students, I don't really record their videos or post them because they've passed. So, <laughs> uh, But yeah, this is quite an interesting video. Uh, the student failed because of two serious mistakes and hopefully I would tell you what mistakes he did and where he did it so it can help you a lot. Recently, I've had a lot of messages on YouTube saying that post more videos uh, and uh, I just found the time to do this because I'm on holidays and I had the time to do this. <laughs> now, as you can see, the student just left the test center and this first mini roundabout, uh, the sat nav doesn't recognize this mini roundabout and it doesn't say anything. So the examiner always helps you and tells you to go straight ahead from the mini roundabout. Now we're coming up to the next roundabout and uh, on this next roundabout the sat nav would always say first exit straight ahead but it's actually the second exit straight ahead and here again the examiner will help you and he would tell you to take the second exit which is straight ahead. On this roundabout you could be on the left or right it doesn't matter but if you're staying on the left lane then make sure you swerve the car all the way around if you're staying on the right line, then make sure you check your left mirror and make sure no one's on your left as you take the exit. Now coming up to the big roundabout, the Asda and McDonald's roundabout. Here the sat nav said, take the third exit and join the dual carriageway. So again here, you could stay on the right lane or the left line, it doesn't matter. If you're staying on the right lane, then make sure as you go around the roundabout, you stay in the inner side of the roundabout, the inner lane. And when you take your exit, you could take it on the right hand lane. It's a two lane exit. But if you see that the left lane is empty, in good time, you can move over. So as my student did, he started on the right hand lane. But as he's coming off the roundabout, he checked his mirror and there was nobody there. So he moved over to the left, which is absolutely fine. But if there was a car on your left, then you can stay on the right lane for a little bit until it's safe and then move over to the left. But do not stay on the right hand lane all the way through because that will fail you. Now the sat nav is saying take the next slip road off to Grace. Now this is where I think a mistake has happened. So as you see my student taking the slip road, but he does not move to the left line. He stays on the right hand side of the slip road. And soon you will see a lorry undertaking him. So the examiner marked him down a minor mistake for this, because as you take the slip road, you should stay always on the left hand lane. But in good time, he checked his mirror, indicated and moved over to the left. Now from this roundabout, he's taking the first exit towards Grace. This is quite a, f uh, a useful route a lot of examiners can take you on this route. It goes through Gray's Broadway and there's quite a lot of things to worry about here and I will go over every single thing you need to know on this video hopefully. The road becomes very narrow and very windy so you got to make sure you don't hit the curb or the islands in the middle so you have to make sure you drive in the middle of your lane. Now we're coming up to another roundabout and it's the third exit straight ahead. So even though it's the third exit, but it's straight ahead, 
So you don't need a right signal as you approach the roundabout. As you pass the first, then the second exit, then you should check your left mirror, put a left signal on, and then take this exit. Now we're approaching a mini roundabout, and the sat nav says, follow the road ahead, second exit. Now, you must know that when you're taking the second exit, which is straight ahead, you don't need a left signal when you're coming off, because on mini roundabouts, you're kind of exempt to not signal left when you're coming off it. Now we're coming up to a double bend. So the examiner helps you here and he says that we're following the road ahead. First on the right, we're following the road. Then on the left, we're following the road. So here the examiner start telling my learner that we're coming up to a bend and we're gonna follow the road to the right. Now you should know that you shouldn't slow down. I mean, I shouldn't give way because it's your priority. You're following the road. You don't need to indicate you're following the road to the right first and here the road bends to the left. So you're following the road to the left. Again, you don't need a left signal. You can use a signal, but there's no need for it. Now we're approaching a mini roundabout and the instructions were turn right second exit. So all you gotta do is put on a right signal and look out for cars coming from your right. You don't really have to worry too much about your left as the left will have to give you way. Now approaching another mini roundabout and the instructions were to take the second exit straight ahead. Again, as I said, when you're going straight ahead on a mini roundabout, you don't need to put any left signals. You can just carry on straight ahead. So my learner was pretty good here. He did not rush into it. He gave way to all the oncoming cars, which is the right thing to do in this spot, because as you can see, the road is very narrow and there's parked cars on the left. Now approaching another mini roundabout and the instructions were to turn right second exit. And again, it's a mini roundabout. So when you're turning right, you just need to put a right signal. Now we're approaching another mini roundabout and the instructions were to turn that first exit.
Now the examiner asked him to pull up on the left here, which is quite common. The examiner will ask you to pull up at least three, four times on the left. Now, what he did when he pulled up, he did not put a left signal on here. So that was one of his minor mistakes. But then when he moved off, he did check his blind spots and he did put a right signal on, which is lovely. Now the instructions were to turn right. Sorry, not this right, the next right. Now the instructions were to turn left. Now the examiner asked my learner to pull up again on the left just before the red car. This is where he asked him to do a parallel parking. So the way they give you instructions for parallel parking or reverse parking is that the examiner will pull you up and then ask you to use the car in front of you, which is the red car in this case. Go next to the car, then reverse back, uh, trying to keep the car close to the curb and finish the whole manoeuvre within two car lengths. And you do get a chance to fix it. So, for example, if you mess it up in any way, like if you end up too far away from the curb or too close to the curb, you can fix the maneuver. That will not fade you. But in this case, he aced the maneuver. He was really good. I trained him really well. He was really good with all his manoeuvres. So coming up to another mini roundabout and the instructions were to turn left, first exit.
now we're coming up to the end of the road and there's a traffic light there and the instructions were to turn right from the traffic lights now this is where the second mistake comes and this is a serious mistake so what he does as you can see it's green as he turns right he stops in the middle of the junction as you can see there's red lights which is not for him but he all of a sudden stops here and this is one of the serious mistakes because these red lights are for the car behind him not for him so he should have carried on going that's where he picked up this first serious mistake and the examiner straight away helped him out and said look these lights are not for you you should not pull up here in the middle Now coming up to a roundabout, the instructions were to take the first exit on the left. Now I would like to talk a little bit more about that mistake. So as you are turning right and you see a green light in front of you, as you start turning those lights are for you so once you start turning right then when you see another set of lights and if they're they definitely got to be red so if they're red you should not stop in the middle because the first green light which you saw and you start moving to turn right those are the lights you follow the second set of lights which are red are for the cars waiting behind you it's for them This is black short lane and this is one of the favorite places for the examiners to pull you up on the left. So when you're pulling up, make sure you don't block a driveway, you don't stop at a double yellow line or you don't stop when there's a parked car on the right hand side. The reason why you don't stop if there's a car parked on the right hand side is that you would be blocking the road and there would be very little room for cars which are behind you or coming from the front to go through so you always pick up a spot where there's no parked cars on the right hand side of the road as you can see some of the cars are parked on the curb but when you are on your driving test and you've been asked to pull up on the left never go on top of the curb now the instructions on this mini roundabout was to turn left, first exit. Now we're approaching another mini roundabout. The instructions are to turn left, first exit.
Now the examiner will pull you up a few times on the left as he is. Now again, you got to make sure you pull up at a safe place. You're not blocking a driveway, you're not blocked on a double yellow line or stopping where there's a parked car on your right. So my student knew very well he did not pull up where there was parked cars. As you can see in the video, the examiner is pulling up quite a lot because they have certain uh, assessments to do. They do check that when you're pulling up, you're checking your blind spots when you're driving off, you're pulling up at a safe place, you're doing everything according to the driving standards. We are coming up to the end of the road and the instructions were to turn left at the end of the road. Traffic lights going straight ahead. Now here you have a filter light. So as you can see, there's a green arrow, which means if you're going straight, you can carry on going. Now we're approaching a big roundabout, the Big Dan roundabout. And from the roundabout, the instructions were to take the third exit and follow the signs for Tilbury. Now third exit is on the right after 12 o'clock so you can see my learners on the right hand lane with the right hand signal on. As you pass the second exit, you should start checking your left mirror now, putting a left signal on to change position to take your exit. Now you see this road, 
the speed limit is 40 miles per hour. Oh, here the examiner asked my learner to do one of the show me questions, which is clean your front window with windscreen washer water. So as I was saying, this road is 40 miles per hour, and this is where the second mistake happened, the second serious mistake. So this road becomes a dual carriageway, as you can see, and it becomes two lanes. Now here, you're supposed to move over to the left line because it's a dual carriageway, but my learner stayed on the right hand lane all the way through, even though you can see national speed limit signs. So on any dual carriageway, you're supposed to drive only on the left hand lane. And this is where the second serious mistake happened. You can see he's still on the right hand lane, which is wrong. He should be on the left hand lane of the dual carriageway. And then approaching a roundabout, the examiner told him to take the first exit towards Tilbury. So from here on, he's on his way back to the test center. You can watch the rest of the video, but I just wanted to stop recording now uh, my voiceover because uh, these are the two major mistakes he made. There was a few bit of minor mistakes like not indicating when pulling up and stuff like that. But these were the two serious mistakes that failed him. I hope you enjoyed the video and please subscribe my channel so I can keep on posting new videos for you and helping you learners out. Thank you very much.